Okay, so correcting your images before co-localization. I previously made a, a video on co-localization using the Just Another Co-localization plugin and you can find that on the channel. I received a couple of questions about how else you might do co-localization and I thought it might be worthwhile saying why you would correct an image. So before co-localization or at least assess your image quality. Let's take these two images, the red and the green, and merge them uh, using the merge channels function. So my red channel is uh, red T1 and my green channel is green T1. We'll keep the images. Okay, if we zoom in, <coughs> you can see that in the background between the cells there's quite a bit of noise, particularly in the red channel. It's quite noisy. And if the green channel was also noisy, then you would get some stray co-localization. You could, of course, measure co-localization under a threshold, which is also described in the previous video, but that noise would still contribute to the co-localization measure. So how can we account for that? Right, let's consider if we had two, uh, two images that were identical. Okay, so here's a green image. Let me just uh, duplicate this image. Uh, well, actually, no, I don't need to duplicate it. Let me just go to Co-Localization Finder. And this shows us the, the scatter graph, the pixel fluorogram, where if the two images, if there was perfect co-localization, if two images, two identical images are used, then you should see perfect co-localization. Okay, so image one is this image, image two is this image, and the scatter graph, of course, is a straight line. For every green intensity, every green pixel of a particular intensity, at the same location, there's the same intensity in the other image. Of course, they're identical images, right? Okay, that makes sense. The idea here is that if there is no image noise or very low image noise, if you took the same image at time point one and at time point two, they should be very similar. In fact, you would hope that they would be identical. So here are two images. The only difference in these two images is that this is time point one and this is time point two. The image has been taken on a confocal microscope and then as soon as the image is taken, the image is taken again. So the only difference here is a few seconds difference in time. Let's co-localize these two and see if there's a problem. Okay, so I'm going to do green T1, which is time point one, against green T2, time point two. So time point one against time point two. Now you see it's not a straight line. Well, it's a straight line, but it's not it, it, it's not a thin line. The width of this pixel fluorogram tells us there's a bit of noise in the image. Let's look at the red channel. So here's my red time point one. You can see it's a bit noisy even just to begin with. You, you, you'll see that it's quite noisy. And here's my red time point two. Two, sorry, it's gone on to my other screen. Okay, so here's my red time point one, red time point two, um, and let's analyze using the co-localization finder. And we'll do red time point two against red time point one. And you can see it's really quite spread out. So what this is telling us is that I've got a lot of noise in my red channel. You can see it, all these pixels. So if I've got a lot of noise in my red channel and I've got some noise in my green channel, what we need to do is we need to correct for that noise. I've got two time points. I've got time point one and time point two. So what I could do is I could correct the image. I could correct for the noise in the image. And now that I've got four images, I could make an analysis of, let's say, red time point one 
against green time point one and red time point one against green time point two to give me an average co-localization. And I could do red time point two against green time point one and red time point two against green time point two. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would go through that process. Let me quickly just cover the Just Another Co-localization plugin. Now, it allows us to obtain a Pearson's correlation for our co-localization. The Pearson's correlation is quite sensitive to noise, so it's good for assessing image quality, um, but it means that you probably want to make your co-localization analysis uh, under a, a threshold mask. Uh, this is I go into this in a bit more detail in the other video, so I would I would recommend you have a look at that. So I'm using green time point one and red time point one just in this example here. I will use the automatic threshold. I'm collecting the Pearson's coefficient and the Mandel's coefficients. Um, the thresholds are set automatically by the algorithm, but you can you can adjust these to suit, and that's up to you to to pick where you think are appropriate threshold settings for your uh, for your own purposes. If we choose analyze, we get a whole bunch of stuff. Um, the images go quite large for some reason on this screen, but let me just get right back to the bit that we're interested in, which are these values here. And you see here there's a Pearson's coefficient of 0 0.637 um, and under the threshold 0 0.488 under these uh, under these values. <clears throat> you can choose to use whichever you like, but that's the process for collecting the the coefficient values that we will use in the in the next segment. So this is a method that was developed by a friend and colleague, Dr. Jeremy Adler. And this figure that we're looking at comes from one of Jeremy's publications. So the images here are bits of blood vessel, where previously we looked at cells, but it doesn't really matter. And this image here is green time point one. And this image is green time point two, red time one, and red time two. We collect a Pearson's correlation of green of time one, green, time two, green, to get 0 0.955. And here's the correlation, Pearson's correlation for the two red time points. To get the correction factor, we need to do sorry. The correction is equal to one over the square root of the green correlation times the red correlation. And if we work through this, then we've got 0 0.955 times 0 0.8, which gives us a value of 0 0.764. I am not doing this in my head, I can assure you. And then we've got the square root of 0 0.764 which gives us 0 0.874 and 1 over 0 0.874 is equal to 1.144 and that is our correction factor, as shown here. What we then do is we take the Pearson's correlation for time one, green time one against red time one, green time one against red time two, green time two against red time one, green time two against red time two. This gives us four individual correlations we take the average of those correlations, in this case 0 0.732, we multiply these together to get our corrected correlation of 0 0.837. And this correlation, this co-localization correlation factor takes account of the noise in the images. So if you've got noisy images, 
I would recommend that you have a look at this technique. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Thank <phone> you. <rings>